Noobcast. Greetings, fellow noobs. Welcome to another Noobcast. This is Blomus bringing you 1v1. We are on daybreak again, apparently. This time with a ZVP. Big surprise, because that's what we do around here. Lots of ZVP. We got Repens. He's the Red Zerg. And his opponent... Obviously, this is some kind of custom game, or do I have the team unit thing? I guess not. Anyway, Green Protoss is Krios, or Cryos. Uh, you will know Cryos as Worm, or Verm, as I always call him. Um, he got a new account. He actually shared account, an account. The Verm account was shared between him and his buddy, and he finally got his own account. Uh, in a few days, we're actually going to see a, a Verm uh, account, which is actually a Zerg player. <laughs> so, in case you're confused, I'm not sure why you would be, but this is Cryos, or Krios. And he is going to forge fast expand, because that's what you do as a Protoss against a Zerg player unless your name is Blums. That's right, baby. Little pause action going on. Uh, Zerg player going to hatch first, it appears. Yes, indeedy. Uh, which is interesting. Normally we see... Uh, this is platinum level, by the way. Normally we see Zerg's pool first against a Protoss. Though, if the Protoss is Forge Fast Expanding, you don't really need to worry about Protoss Aggression. And you're probably perfectly fine getting your hatch first, then your pool. That's what I'd say. It would be really funny if Krios just dropped down three gateways. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be that funny because Reference would scout it right away. <laughs> And he sees the forge pass expand and knows that he's perfectly safe and all is well. If you're new to Noobcast, I'm Blomus, and we are all about, uh, under normal circumstances, this is what we're all about. Showing non-pro replays, checking out the uh, bronze through master scene, and occasionally a grandmaster. Uh, recently, we've had to do some uh, lower level pro casts just to... Uh, Still some time. This week, though, we're going to be doing mostly um, user-submitted reps. There will be one or two pro games, I think, thrown in there. Just um, a couple Stargirl casts, I think, as well. Uh, but our mainstay is user-submitted replays from lower-level games, uh, continually proving and reproving the theory that fun and exciting games can happen at any level. As we see Reppens getting his very fast third hatchery before the five minute mark. Usually you don't see that till around six minutes, but Reppin's not making any units, just making queens and drones and hatcheries, and that is all. Creo's getting to mine and making those probes. He does have these four lings out on the field, so I was wrong about him not making any units. Just wanted to get those out there, which uh, is very common again. Pretty standard, get those out there, get them scouting. Uh, no tech going down yet for either player, really. Um, to finish my previous thought, uh, since we are focused on lower level play, if you have a replay that you would like to send in, please send it on over to newcast at gmail.com. I'll send it to my screener, and if it's good enough, you will get in the queue to be cast. The queue is actually pretty short, so if you send in a game, it's probably going to be cast within a week or two. Normally the turnaround was three or four weeks, but now uh, it could be a couple days, depending on uh, what's the what. So uh, don't be afraid. We are generally lenient depending on the level you're in. Um, we're a little bit more lenient towards bronzes than we are towards uh, diamonds because you know, we take we take bad play for granted here. We realize that your macro is not going to be perfect, that you're going to make micro mistakes. Um, when we critique games, most of the time we critique decision making. 
that's my big area of uh, focus when I'm critiquing players because, hey, if you've ever watched me play, like in that last game, my macro is pretty bad. My micro, I make a ton of mistakes, and um, even my decision making is not always good. <laughs> but uh, that's generally where uh, I like to focus. See, getting some guys on gas here. Krios now four gas is pumping, and Reppin's getting his gas up. He's also going to have four. Uh, doing an okay job of injecting, but not making... I wonder if he's saving these drones to uh, make roaches. It's the only thing I can think of, getting that flare up. And he's basically... All he's doing is teching thus far. He's got no units other than these four zerglings, and he wants to wait and see if we have some Protoss aggression, which it looks like we're going to have. We've got five, six gates up now, so... Uh, Krios decides to, he can uh, open these bad boys up and generate some pressure here for his opponent. And of course, if he does, he's got uh, much less larvae than he did a minute ago to respond. Just making Zerglings right now, which is actually a bit of a surprise. He does have quite a few minerals stacked up here, so... And he is getting his uh, his roach speed, so he may wait for another round of units to make roaches. He's getting his macro hatch up. I'm going to be sending out these zerglings. Okay, okay, he's just sending them all back to the tower yet again. Not going to be pushing directly. It would be a bad idea to push right now. We do have plus two attack down for Krios. Doing a good job to stay on his upgrades. He does have Blink incoming. And his Stalker to Zealot ratio is good for to make Blink your first upgrade. Reppin's taking two more gases, so I expect to see a Spire at some point soon. Uh, if he's He has not made a ton of Roaches. He just killed a Probe, I think. He wants to keep the uh, Protoss from making that third. It looks like Krios wants to go out here. I'd be, uh, it wouldn't be a bad decision for him to do that because then he could force field in all those Zerglings. Wouldn't be a bad idea at all. And here's Reppin's taking a fourth base and just doing a run by there. He wanted to see what the army of Krios looked like and saw that it wasn't something he wanted to engage and so he dropped out. We have 14 Roaches incoming immediately and a round of larva about to pop so he can immediately make some more if he so chooses. We got 14 roaches. Looks like Krios moving out. Wants to uh, put some pressure on, do some damage. He's actually going the wrong way to make that happen because the expansions that he wants to hit are on this side. Normally you want to come up the right side as a Protoss unless you are planning on going into the just into the main and uh, taking out tech and stuff. The tech is well, pretty well spread out. More queens incoming. We have Templar tech coming uh, for Krios as his level 2 attack finishes. You're seeing a lot more Protoss uh, disregard. I don't really like this engagement with the stalkers out front like that. We can just blink them back. He's going to take out this queen. Which is actually, again, a lot of Zergs doing really good with their spread. Don't go up that ramp. Blink back, blink back. He is just going to go. That would have been a perfect place for Reppens to uh, very slow but nicely done force fields. And splitting up the army now. Zealots completely wrecking these roaches. But more and more roaches pouring in. And the the high, I um, mean the freaking infestation pit just finished. And Krios uh, getting pushed out of there by all these roaches. And those are really unnecessary force fields by Krios, but they got the job done. The job that didn't need, be do need doing. And the difference there for Reppens was he had his macro hatch up and running, he had a queen on it, he was injecting, and now he has Hydras in the mix. Uh, not what I would have thought. And I, I kind of like how Reppens is spreading out his tech. The downside of that, of course, is if 
Kratos decides to attack one of your or all of your expansions, you will uh, be kind of hard pressed to uh, stick around with tech. But if he's taking out your hydras and your infest infestation pit, then you can just make roaches, I guess. Got infestors coming out. <laughs> the wild star girl appears and leaves right away. Lots of. Oh, there's the spire I was looking for. Got plenty of larva, 20 larva working. Uh, making a nicely sized army here. Good mix so far. Um, and it looks like we're doing just Archons, no Templar. And we are getting plus three attack. Third base up for Krios and completely walled in. Except for right here. I don't know if anything can get by there. No idea. Maybe it's cut off here. A couple cannons, several gateways. Gotta like it. Lots of spine crawlers going down here. For weapons. These guys are playing like it's the GSL. I expect to see some uh, a Stargate and a Fleet Beacon soon. We can get a, uh, a mothership out here. I don't think people appreciate. Everyone talks about how hard it is, how easy it is for a mother control a mothership to control the game. Is this the first time Krios getting a Robo? Wow, that's crazy. No Robo at all. Wow. Um, but I imagine that. Properly operating a mothership takes quite good micro. More Templar going down. Lots of Zealots. Charge completed. Now finally getting a plus defensive up upgrades. But here's a Zerg player with no upgrades. Krios is going to absolutely wreck this army. It's not going to be funny or close. Krios is going to come back in here. This is called the hammer and the anvil. Here is your anvil. Here is the hammer. And the zealots are going to get in. Oh no, it gets fumbled on the zealots. They're not able to get out front, but it doesn't even matter because the zealots are completely surrounding this army and the archons completely annihilating it. And goodbye, Zerg army. Have a nice day. 54 roaches being instantly queued for repens. And he's getting burrow and he's getting high tech finally. So it looks like. Uh, he will probably go to Broodlord Tech because he hasn't made a single Mutalisk. And 54 Roaches all pop at once. And uh, wow, that's a lot of Roaches. That is a lot of Roaches and very nice job. Uh, I don't think you want to back up that far, but getting into these Spine Crawlers is not a good idea. Army getting split up. Revan's able to take down some of these Vikings. And if they decide to attack up into this ramp, oh, he's just going to lose these units to the these roaches and it's just a bad idea for Krios and Krios just needs to turn around the whole look his army is what are you even looking at bro what are you looking at where are you looking you're warping guys in and your armies get killed and 54 roaches not enough oh but he sent that's why because he sent this army down here where his zealots were uh, sent I guess that's what uh, Krios was looking at warping in zealots to uh, Take out again, separating this army. It looks like Reppens is eventually going to clean this up. Um, and if he gets aggressive, he probably has an opportunity to do some damage to uh, Krios here. But he's going to have to uh, get in there and quick. Almost mind out in the main here is actually going to need a, another base in a minute because he, you see he's not doing that hop in his natural either. Gonna need a fourth. He has taken away. Hey, oops. Sorry. He still hasn't seen the fourth base here, though he's done quite a bit of damage killing drones that are now idle. He definitely has a few drones. He could be mining here, and he is making more drones. Uh, I think he's just focused on making units, though. And he does have four corruptors coming out. Another queen. He's got quite a few roaches out here. Uh, a lot of lings and a few hydras mixed in. Uh, corruptors are not. Are the, corruptors going to be worthless unless he's making. Yeah, there he goes down with the 
Greater Spire. Uh, they're not going to be of that much use to him until... And I love this. Go ahead, Prios. Take that fourth base. Getting his... Uh, further his uh, armor upgrades. He's oversaturated here at the third. Um, this is fine over here. Obviously, again, he's mined out here at home. This fourth base is very important. And Zerg player maxed. And he's going to go around. Uh, Creo's got to be careful. He's going to sneak in the back here. Oh, I would have kept right on going. Look at the, all these zealots at home. And Creo's moving in. He's uh, leaving the zealots at home looking for the counterattack. Is he going to turn around and come back? Because that's a big army. Yes, he is. Looking at the minimap. Creo's and uh, Reppin's turning right around to come back and combat Creo's. But uh, Reppin's. I, he doesn't have vision of the army, so I don't know why he's coming back. But uh, he must be concerned about that fourth base. Not quite finished yet. What do we got here? Where we got corruptors here waiting for a greater spire, which just finished. Are we gonna see broodlords? Here's the engagement. They're on creep, so if Reppins wanted to kite, he could. I don't like this. He's going to try and get uh, them coming up the ramp, which is not a bad idea, except he does have now vision of the high ground. Stalker's behind the Archons, which are tanking all the damage, and weird... Op oh, there's Broodlord. That was a weird opportunity to morph. Uh, now, Reppens, though, 2-2 two -two is going to have a fighting chance against these 3-2 Protoss units, and he actually does clean this up, and with uh, some... believe I didn't never put that up there and Reppin's dominating in the supply count here he's even got a changeling in with the Protoss army Reppin's moves forward here he's definitely and with the Broodlords now he only has three but he could be making more why he's not making more I don't know he really ought to be making several more he is mining now from these other two bases. He's almost mined out of his natural. He's going to attack in with Zealots and Krios again, not paying attention. And there's the burrow. Get your observer down here, Brohan. And here come the Broodlords. He was waiting for those guys to catch up. And now he's got Noblink Stalkers. And I don't know how Krios is going to survive this. He may have to GG. Uh, warping in. Nine or ten at a time, he's gonna be able, he might be able to take down the Blue Lords, but so what at this point? He's gonna take down two of the three, but he's gonna lose this fourth base as a consequence. And I don't think he's gonna survive. He's only got these group of zealots. He doesn't have a ton of money. Reppins has way out macroed him. He's on uh, more bases, and he's gonna take down these production facilities and just waltz right through here, taking out the third. If he gets the third, then um, I'm pretty sure the game is over anyway. But if he gets the third, it's not going to be good. 2-2 two, two against 2-3. Stalkers picking off from a distance, but the Zealots do not last long. And I think we're going to see a GG from Krios as we see more Broodlords morphing here from Reppins. And I don't think... This is gonna be. This has got to be it. You know, kill a lot of drones or probes here, and this base is going down. And there's nowhere for these guys to go. He's trying to build another base over here, but yeah. You know. And what did Krios do wrong? He didn't have Robotech. He didn't have any vision of the map. Um, until very late in the game. He was very slow to take more bases. Um, he didn't get Storm. Um, he didn't get... Gee, I don't even know. Maybe a Mothership? Because, I mean, this is late game. And it's really hard to win against Zerg in late game without a Mothership. Um, even though it's probably kind of hard to do. Uh, didn't have a lot of sentries in his army, so he couldn't split up. I guess that's it. But uh, thanks, Krios, for 
submitting a game that you lost it's a rarity but you've done it more than i think anyone else and uh so you know a good game even when you lose and i really appreciate that and it was a good game so uh good job and keep climbing that ladder guys see you next time